Thanks to the ease of travel, planes, trains, and automobiles, the world has never been smaller. But no matter where you go, there are risks, from big and small, hot and cold, to famous or relatively unknown. If you like adventures in your life, you came to the right place. We tell people not to touch the plants, okay. not to stand too close to them, not to smell them, and <laughs> definitely not to taste them. If you have no fear of heights, love excitement, and taking risks, look no further. No backpacking required. 15 most dangerous tourist destinations in the world. Number 15. New Smyrna Beach. Since it's one of the best surf areas on the East Coast, if there are waves, there are people there. But signs are posted up and down New Smyrna Beach saying, warning dangerous marine life. Located on Florida's East Coast, this beach has a reputation for shark attacks been dubbed the shark attack capital of the world. When a first responder was asked about the attacks, they said one day we had two within 10 or 15 minutes. A shark attacked the first surfer at 10.16 a.m. one morning, the second at 10.27. The sharks attacking are black tip and spinner sharks around three feet in length. They leave their victims behind with cut up hands or feet that typically require at least a dozen stitches. The good news is that these bites are not fatal. Most shark attacks are exploratory bites, in which the shark grabs on and releases its human prey, leaving behind the recognizable gashes from their teeth. According to the county records, April, August, and September are the worst months. But keep in mind, experts estimate the chances of getting bit by a shark in New Smyrna Beach are 10 times higher than anywhere else nationwide. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Many of us love a vacation that involves one thing, the beach. The sand and surf, a reclining chair, and a cocktail sound perfect to a lot of people around the world. So when a massive military hovercraft rolls up to the beach, stirring up waves, wind, and sand, you better hope you're out of the water when it does. But what's a military to do? This is how they unload marines and armored vehicles on a beach quickly. If any of these beachgoers were impressed, certainly some of them were seriously annoyed. Vacation over. But despite this, there are other dangers on the beach, sun exposure or water hazards, but that doesn't stop anyone from soaking up some sun or going for a swim. Would this sort of military operation spoil your trip? Comment below using the hashtag open discussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Yosemite Half Dome In Yosemite National Park in California lies a granite dome that's more than 8,800 feet high. Near its summit are twisted metal handrails that allow hundreds of hikers daily to ascend to the very top. Thousands of visitors hike to the summit each year, rewarded with spectacular views and an experience that's not easily forgotten. But should they? In a five-year period, Half Dome's perilous climb prompted at least 140 search and rescue missions 290 accidents, and 12 deaths. Though the rock formation has become one of Yosemite's most iconic symbols, it's also one of the most dangerous hikes in the U.S. Before 2010, Yosemite authorities believed that the deaths were likely caused by overcrowding on the summit. On peak days, as many as 1,200 hikers could be found attempting the steep climb. With fewer people on the mountain, authorities figured hikers would be forced to stand during the middle of their climbs, which could lead to fatigue. A smaller crowd might also mean that the trail wouldn't bottleneck during poor weather conditions. To control for Half Dome's popularity, the National Park Service implemented a rule that allows only 300 hikers on the summit per day. Hikers are required to apply for a daily permit to tackle this dangerous climb. Number 13. Pamplona. The running of the bulls in Spain is a part of the annual festival of San Fermin during which six bulls are released into the cobblestone streets of Pamplona to be corralled to the city's bull ring. And as you can see, it's not just bulls running. People run alongside these huge animals with horns the whole way. Participating runners demonstrate their bravado by attempting to dodge the angry bulls en route to the city center. But it does not end well for some. Since 1924, 15 people have been killed at the running of the bulls. Still, before the run formally begins, participants sing in a benedictin to San Fermin asking for protection. Most wear a common uniform, white shirt, white pants, red neck scarf, and red belt or waist scarf. 
The white of the uniform is thought to reference the aprons or the medieval butchers who corralled the bulls through the streets, and the red is worn in honor of San Fermin. Every morning at 8 a.m. during the festival, six bulls and at least six steers are released into the streets. Though the contemporary festival is largely symbolic, its original purpose, dating back to the 13th century, was to allow herders and butchers to drive cattle from pens outside of the city to the bull ring in preparation for market days and bull fights. Number 12. Trift Bridge The Trift Bridge in Switzerland is one of the most spectacular suspension bridges in the Alps. At over 325 feet high and over 550 feet long, it's poised above the region of the Trift Glacier, with spectacular views guaranteed for those with a head for heights. It's a thin, modern suspension bridge that looks like it could blow over with one stray wind but is in fact quite safe. But the bridge hasn't been here for long. In 2004, a suspension bridge was built as the glacier was no longer high enough for visitors to access the hut. Climate change is causing the glaciers to melt, some, such as the Trift Glacier, especially quickly. Only a few years ago, the Trift Hut could be reached on foot via the glacier, but once the ice was gone, the Trift Bridge was born. The new addition turned out to be a tourist magnet. After hiking around one and a half hours to the Trift Bridge, the stunning views of the turquoise Blue Glacier Lake and Glacier Tongue are more than ample reward. A cable car that was originally built as a freight gondola takes passengers up to the area near the bridge. The journey there is truly an adventure in itself. Trift Bridge is considered to be one of the longest and highest pedestrian suspension bridges in the Alps. Number 11. Icelandic Volcano Iceland's hottest real estate right now is dozens of square miles of barren lava land in Iceland, where visitors can experience the eruptions of a live volcano. Rarely has a volcano put on such a spectacular show within easy reach from Iceland's capital and airport. This makes it a unique opportunity for anyone to see a newborn volcano and its fresh lava fields. The last volcanic eruption in Iceland began in March of 2021, following weeks of seismic activity in the surrounding area. After much anticipation, a new fissure in the earth opened up and molten lava started to flow down to the valley below. This region is located in the southwest of Iceland and is home to the popular Blue Lagoon Geothermal Pool and the country's international airport. It would take you approximately 30 minutes to drive to the volcano car park from there. Since it's a UNESCO Global Geopark teeming with volcanic landscapes and geothermal activity due to the pulling apart of two tectonic plates, it's the only place in the world where you can see the North Atlantic Ridge on land. But the lava flow isn't guaranteed. By December 2021, it was announced that the eruption there had ended. But with increased activity under the surface, it might mean the volcano could erupt again. Number 10. Death Valley Located in both California and Nevada, it's the largest national park in the lower 48 states and has nearly a thousand miles of roads that provide access to both popular and remote locations in the park. But it's not for everybody. You can't beat the heat at Death Valley. In July 2018, the hottest place on Earth experienced its hottest month on record. The average temperature was 108.1 degrees Fahrenheit, including overnight lows. Daytime highs reached a temperature of 127 degrees, four days in a row. This kind of heat can be dangerous, but that doesn't mean you can't explore the park. As the hottest, driest, and lowest national park, Death Valley is a land of extremes. More than just a scorching desert, Death Valley offers park visitors a striking contrast of landscapes to explore. From the snow that frosts the park's towering peaks, to the lush wildflower meadows and small oasis that provide a reprieve from the heat to seemingly endless desert plains, visitors are urged to stay in well-traveled areas of the park in case of a vehicle breakdown. Be sure to come prepared. Cell phones often have no reception in this park. Other tips for a safe visit include drinking plenty of water, eating snacks, limiting activities outside of air conditioning, and visiting viewpoints at higher, cooler elevations. Number 9. James Bond Dam If you're a fan of the James Bond film Goldeneye, then you may have already seen this dangerous destination. The Contra Dam is an arch dam on the Verzaska River in Switzerland, and it became a popular bungee jumping venue after a James Bond stuntman jumped off it in the opening scene of the 1995 film Goldeneye. The movie starts with a dark figure of a man running along the top of the dam. 
The only time he stops is to rope his ankles by attaching the other end to the railings. Then he launches himself into the abyss. When he finished his breathtaking descent towards the floor of the valley, that can only be one man, James Bond. And you can follow in his footsteps. And now it's nicknamed the 007 Bungee Jump. James Bond plunged with a rubber rope into the depths. Seven and a half seconds free fall parallel to the impressive dam and bungee jumps his way down the 700 foot dam, the fourth highest in Switzerland. It's located 1500 feet above sea level in a rustic valley with an appealing landscape. The jumping station is in the middle of the dam wall. It's the world's highest stationary bungee station. A reservation is absolutely essential for those planning to take the 007 bungee jump. Number 8. Skellig Michael Skellig Michael is a small, rocky island off the coast of Ireland, eight miles from the small fishing town of Port Maggie. In a shining example, a time capsule perhaps, of an early holy settlement deliberately sited on a pyramid rock in the middle of the ocean, perfectly preserved. And since it was featured in the mega-hit film Star Wars The Force Awakens, people are now naturally curious. Skellig Michael is naturally epic, but it has a history outside of Hollywood. Tales of this mysterious place go back to the 8th century, although there are also reports that a monastery existed here in the 6th century. It's from a time when Christian monasteries flooded North Africa, the Near East, and Europe, and it remained a place of pilgrimage well into the 20th century until the Irish government purchased the island in 1989. Plus, all the old small monasteries exist in Skellig, living spaces, buildings for worship, and farming plots too. But as you can see, it's extremely dangerous to visit. There are several locations along the climb to the monasteries with a high risk of a fall. Number 7. Darvaza Crater In Central Asia, there's a vast desert called Karakum in Turkmenistan, composed mostly of sun-bleached sand with the desert covering around 70% of the country. That's where you'll find this fiery cavity in the Earth's crust, a hole 300 feet wide that's been on fire for about 50 years. In fact, the entire area has one of the largest gas reserves in the world. The Darvaza Crater has the distinct honor of the official nickname, the Door to Hell, and you can see why. Back in 1971, a drilling rig gone wild breached an underground cavern with explosive toxic gases suddenly shooting into the air. It was up to those who created the hell hole to seal it up. So someone had the idea to ignite the gas and see if they could exhaust the gas supply in a few days. Nope. Cut to 50 years later and fire is still going. And scientists don special heat-resistant suits like an astronaut to collect samples from the bottom searching for signs of life or clues from this region's ancient past. Amazingly, despite the crater's foreboding name and ever-present flames, people still trek into the desert to witness the site in all its blazing glory. The Darvaza gas crater is now a hot tourist destination, literally. Its fiery glow can be seen for miles around. Number 6. El Caminito This almost five-mile path in Spain was once considered one of the more dangerous in the world. The Caminito del Rey is spectacular from beginning to end, running through cliffs, canyons, and a large valley. It crosses the landscapes, a gorge carved out by the river with walls over 2,000 feet high. Today, the entire route has been carefully restored, but although it's now much safer, one thing hasn't changed. The unique experience of strolling along walkways hanging 300 feet up on a sheer cliff face. It originates in the early 20th century. It was built between waterfalls to bring materials and maintenance workers to the local hydroelectric dam. In 1921, the King of Spain officially opened this feat of engineering, and since then it's been known as the King's Little Walk. The area is also inhabited by a wide variety of plant and animal species. With a little luck, you can see highland birds like Egyptian vultures, griffin vultures, or golden eagles, and mammals such as wild boar and Iberian ibex. The amazing sights on this stretch include a 100-year-old juniper tree growing along the rocks, the fossil beach with Jurassic period fossils, and a glass balcony that sticks out from the walkway for those who feel they need to push their limits. Number 5. Anik Poison Garden Created by the Duchess of Northumberland in Northeast England, this is one garden where you might want to be careful as you tiptoe through the tulips. Behind big black gates, 
The carefully curated contains about 100 legendary killer plants and flowers like Deadly Nightshade and Hemlock for starters. Here you have to think twice before you stop and smell the flowers. There are signs around the site that read, don't touch any of the plants, don't even smell them. There are plants here that can kill you. Formal gardens had been planted in that spot by the first duke in 1750, but by 1950 it had closed. Fast forward 50 years, as the duchess inspected her new property, she came across an overgrown, neglected section. She decided to restore it, not to its former glory, but into a new, modern garden, a deadly one. The poison garden opened in 2005. At first glance, this garden looks totally harmless. But here you'll only find noxious plants. They can irritate your skin, upset your stomach, or even kill you in a number of ways. Because of how real this danger is, some plants are behind gates under a 24-hour security watch. Number 4. Mount Washington There are colder places and snowier places, but Mount Washington has weather to rival some of the most rugged places on Earth. For over 60 years, this mountain in New Hampshire held the world record for the fastest wind gust ever recorded. That, plus significant cold, abundant snowfall, dense fog, and heavy icing are prominent features here too. Mount Washington is the highest peak in the northeastern United States at 6,288.2 feet and the most topographically prominent mountain east of the Mississippi River. There are days each winter when the combination of life-threatening conditions on the mountain rival those of extremes recorded in the polar regions and on peaks three or four times Mount Washington's height. So, to accurately record the winds is no simple matter. The fact that the 1934 observatory crew could measure a wind of this magnitude during a period of very heavy glaze icing is astounding and probably not a fun day at work, but a monumental one. The famous wind gust of 231 miles per hour recorded in 1934 stands as the record for the fastest surface wind measured in the northern and western hemispheres. Number 3. Boiling Lake if you're over on this Caribbean island called Dominica, hike through the Valley of Desolation, and this is what you'll find. Sounds scary, right? Hiking to the world's second largest boiling lake is one of the best experiences here, but it's also one of the most demanding hikes on the island. The second largest of its kind in the world, Boiling Lake is a flooded fumarole from a volcano in the area known as the Valley of Desolation. Words that seem to describe life on another planet, but which perfectly capture what you'll find if you're daring enough. The awe of Boiling Lake is surpassed only by the breathtaking vistas that surround it, with clear views of the ocean on a neighboring island and timeless terrain shaped by erosive and volcanic forces of nature over 200 million years in the making. Unless you're very familiar with the terrain, it's highly recommended to hire a guide ahead of time to accompany you. 200 feet wide and its depth is unknown, the lake is enveloped by swirling clouds of vapor and resembles a cauldron of furiously bubbling grayish-blue water superheated from the molten magma below. Interestingly, the site also stays fairly active. It will occasionally drain and even form geyser-like fountains of hot water and steam. Number 2. Mount Huashan Because it's very steep and narrow and there's only one safety rope to protect you from what looks like a bottomless abyss, Many tourists come here to challenge themselves and feel the ultimate adrenaline rush. Washington Plank Walk is a highlight of Mount Hua. It was first built over 700 years ago by a Taoist priest with stone nails carved into the cliff surrounding the wooden plank for people to walk on. And it's reputed as the most dangerous hike in the world. Now it's been improved with meadows considering safety issues, but the path is still very narrow. So, you're literally one step away from the bottomless chasm with no protection from the guardrails. In addition, the walk does not lead to other paths on the mountain, which means you need to return by the way you came. The first section is nearly vertical. You need to get down holding to the iron chains from the so-called stairs, which are actually metal bars carved into the crevice. Then keep walking and you'll come to the lower section, which is also the most dangerous part. Stone holes are chiseled on the cliff to wedge piles so that the planks can be put there. And in some parts, there's even no plank and you have to pass stepping on the stone holes one by one. And after reaching the end of the path, you need to walk the same way back. Number 1. Snake Island 
It's so dangerous to set foot on this island, authorities have made it illegal for anyone to visit, about 25 miles off the coast of Brazil. Why, you ask? Snakes! It's estimated that there are over 2,000 to 4,000 vipers on the island, maybe more. This is not a hidden paradise, folks. Snake Island is uninhabited now, but people used to live there for a short period up until the late 1920s, when, according to legend, the local lighthouse keeper and his family were killed by vipers that slithered in through the windows. Today, the Navy periodically visits the lighthouse for upkeep and makes sure no adventurers are wandering too close to the island. Still, locals in the coastal towns love to recount horrific tales on Snake Island. They say that the last fisherman who strayed too close to its shores was found days later adrift in his own boat, lifeless from a snake bite. Another local legend claims that the snakes were originally introduced by pirates seeking to protect buried treasure on the island. The snakes here are a unique species of pit viper, the golden lancehead. These serpents possess a powerful, fast-acting venom that melts the flesh around their bites and is one of the deadliest serpents in the world.